Max Geyser, thank you. It's a uh, big place here. I'm <laughs> so happy to be here at the Paymium 10 year event. It's exciting, it's enervating, it's beautiful. For 10 years of Paymium, that's why you're here in Paris and I, I'm lucky to, to speak with you. So for the French people uh, of this French channel, can you um, give us your background for uh, people who don't already know you? I was there at Place Concorde uh, chopping off the heads of <laughs> all, all of those people during the reign of terror. I organized it. Uh, Maximilien uh, uh, Robespierre is my great, 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 great uncle. No, that's, that's not true. That's, a, <laughs> that's not true. So, um, well, you know, I started on Wall Street in the 1980s. And then in the 1990s, I, I created a company called the Hollywood Stock Exchange. And I invented a digital currency. And then in 2011, I heard about Bitcoin when it was a dollar. So I started to talk about it on the show Kaiser Report, which goes out to millions of people all over the world. And we started to buy Bitcoin as well. And so we've become, Kaiser Report is kind of, I would say, the most, uh, the, the first uh, broadcast television network to talk about Bitcoin. And it's probably been seen by more people than any, any other kind of show of, of, of that type. And, and so I met uh, uh, the folks at Paymium back in 2011 in Prague at the first Bitcoin event that was held in, in Prague. 2011? Yep. Mm, so you buy Bitcoin in 2011? Yep, when it was a dollar. <laughs> like Pierre? Yeah, like Pierre, that? exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how we met. And uh, so that's, been my, that's my story. Hmm. So it's a classical question, but can you tell us, um, for you, from your point of view, why Bitcoin has value? Why is it is not a scam or uh, just a... Uh, why? Why, uh, why should we buy Bitcoin? Uh, right. Well, if you look at kind of the bigger picture, uh, for 30 or 40 years, all industry, all corporations be, have become digital. Have, software runs the world. You know, all companies run on software. Amazon is a software company. The telephone companies are a software company. Um, you know, government runs on software. So what, what, the last part of the economy that had yet to become revolutionized by software was money itself. And the reason was that it's, it was impossible or considered impossible to create a digital form of money that was impossible to counterfeit. Because online, the easiest thing to do online is to make copies. That's what makes online great. You can send a, an email to a thousand people uh, and it's very easy to make copies. And um, the attempts to do uh, a digital money online, uh, several times they have been attempted, but um, they, they were not successful because of this problem where they were centralized uh, around the software. Uh, and the, the trust that the people who were organizing that software wouldn't create an infinite amount of that digital money that was never there. There was never the trust. But then Bitcoin came around and it's decentralized digital, it's a decentralized digital commodity effectively. And so this was the, and this was uh, in 2009 when, it's, when it started, it was therefore, it was the success of 20 years of, of computer research. You know, how, how can we possibly do this? So the, the Bitcoin protocol, the, the Satoshi Nakamoto's invention the, the, or the discovery of it, uh, solved this problem. And um, so it, 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 it fits in with a world that we live in today that has become dematerialized, right? Things are becoming virtual and uh, commerce is virtual, social interaction is virtual. So there's a, there's a need to have money that works as money that is digital or virtual. And uh, so then Bitcoin came around and it succeeded in creating a non-counterfeitable digital currency. And then the, then the question was, would anyone use it? And at first, uh, very few people used it. It was uh, a few hackers and technology people. But as uh, time went on and people realized that fiat money was uh, a big problem because uh, it was being inflated away constantly. So in fiat money has always been a huge goes problem. Brrr. Money <laughs> printer go burr. Uh, mm. And with gold, you know, gold is, uh, is certainly good money, but it has problems. It's easy to confiscate gold. You can't send gold on the internet. 
Um, it's not absolutely scarce, right? The gold supply increases every year. And uh, it's also highly centralized with the central banks. So gold is good money, but it has a lot of problems. Uh, whereas Bitcoin is digital gold, doesn't have any of those problems. And uh, there's, there are people that need to use it because they want to be doing transactions online. And the US dollar, which is a world reserve currency, is increasingly being politicized. So when America uh, goes to Iran and they, and they censor them over the SWIFT network of payments, or when Julian Assange had problems raising money for his defense, and then the credit card companies and PayPal and these other intermediaries uh, got in the way and censored those transactions. Uh, with Bitcoin, it's impossible to censor. You and I can do a transaction with Bitcoin and nobody can stop it. And th there is a, a huge point here because in every technology, currency is really special because currency is an attribute of the state power. So could you, would you believe that uh, the USA could let it go away and saying, mm, free money, okay, that's fine, I don't need to go brr anymore. <laughs> Is the USA really wanting to, uh, to let it, the, the currency power, to freedom? No, <laughs> they're not. Uh, so it's a main objection uh, on Bitcoin. Uh, uh, Why for, Bitcoin? For the US, but the US, uh, is, uh, the influence of the United States and the, and the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States is falling. Uh, and the influence of countries like El Salvador that just made Bitcoin legal tender is rising. The influence of countries like Nigeria, where Bitcoin, uh, almost a third of the population uses Bitcoin every single day. And it's all over Africa now. Uh, Bitcoin is, is the most uh, traffic in, in Bitcoin you see anywhere in the world is in Africa because there's a real need for it. And they want to be completely outside of the U.S. dollar and fiat money and central banks and all banks. You know, in Africa, countries could be right next to each other and to get currency from one country to the next is hugely problematic, it's bureaucratic, it's, there's all kinds of problems. But with Bitcoin, that whole continent of Africa can start trading with each other, and we already see that happening right now. So the U.S. has the most to lose, and so they'll be the last to ad adopt Bitcoin. You know, we have a saying in Bitcoin is, you get the price you deserve. So by the time the United States figures it out, they'll be paying a million dollars of Bitcoin, two million dollars of Bitcoin. Uh, right now, El Salvador is paying uh, forty, fifty thousand dollars of Bitcoin for their strategic reserves, uh, and we and I, you know I started buying it at a dollar, uh, and others. Uh, Michael Saylor at MicroStrategy bought huge, he bought billions of dollars of Bitcoin when it was at ten thousand dollars a coin, uh, because he understands that um, unlike fiat money, that's de losing purchasing power every year by fifteen percent or more, and soon. He just bought 40, four grand for forty thousand dollars of Bitcoin just uh, last week or something like that. Yes, he he. So just, Bitcoin is cheap yeah. today. He continues to put his uh, corporate cash into Bitcoin because he sees it as superior to holding either dollars or gold. So to the second part of to, to, the, to answer to your question is are our states, do they have the power to stop Bitcoin? And the answer is no, they don't. Uh, because uh, the same reason they can't stop P2P file swapping in the music industry. The music industry would have loved to stop file swapping, but they were incapable of breaking through the encryption. Same thing with Bitcoin, the encryption is unbreakable, it's unhackable. Uh, there's no uh, country or group of countries on earth that could come together and, and um, uh, attack or undermine Bitcoin, and it, what we're seeing now is the realization of different countries at, at, different, at different times. So um, Christine Lagarde, of course, uh, mm -hmm. over there at the ECB, mm -hmm. she's really struggling with this concept because <laughs> she loves the idea that she has power. And she's really um, having trouble with the idea that she doesn't have any more power, that her, the need for the European Central Bank is now no longer needed. We don't need the Federal Reserve Bank. And it will even challenge the structure of the nation state itself. What do you think if I say you that um, e-euro, so uh, stable coin by the ECB, uh, <laughs> like, um, undermine the banking system? Because if I can put my cash in the ECB, why in the world would I put it in bank who can go bankrupt, which can go bankrupt? Uh, absolutely. The European digital currency and other central bank digital currencies are going to kill the, the commercial banks. They're, gonna, they're throwing those banks under the bus 
right? Um, which is absolutely true, but it doesn't compete with Bitcoin because it's, it's centralized digital currency and Bitcoin is decentralized. It's uncensorable, unconfiscatable. Whereas a central bank digital currency is just their own version of another fiat money. But they do, it will give them the ability to kill off uh, various banks because the central banks, no matter how much they allow the banks to borrow from them at super cheap interest rates, like a zero, the banks don't lend out the money. They hoard it for themselves and they give it uh, uh, to their friends. So they're, we know this because the money velocity, in fact, is near zero. Mm. Right, so we know that they're just hoarding the money. Falling under one, uh, if I uh, if I uh, if I don't say uh, mistakes, it's under one velocity of money of uh, M M1 or M2. Yeah, if you look at that chart of the velocity Less of money over the past disaster. ten years, it's <laughs> straight down. And this is because banks are refused to to lend out the money in a way that would stimulate economic growth. They're just holding on to it and they speculate with it on Medigliani's. Uh, you know, chateaus in the south of France, uh, et cetera, right? They don't, they don't lend it to small to medium-sized enterprises. So the central banks are saying, okay, we're going to cut you out. We're going to create a central bank digital currency, and you guys, you know, we're going to cut you out. So those banks are going to be cut out of the, of the... Just like in 2008, remember, Wall Street got together, and they, they, they killed off Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns. Mm -hmm. They had a meeting on Wall Street. Uh, Dick Fold, who was running uh, Lehman Brothers at the time, was basically, he had to walk the plank. You know, he was thrown over, overboard and they took all of his assets, they split them up, right? So that's what they'll do. They'll just have a meeting, they'll, they'll just systemic, uh, systematically uh, kill off these banks and uh, the banking industry as we know it will be gone. Uh, the central bank digital currency will be a a huge uh, goliath of, of, of nonsense. Uh, for example, the money that they issue will have an expiration date, hmm. right? You'll say, here's your digital euro, and unless you spend it in the next six months, the value goes to zero. It, it will delete it, hmm. like all this crazy stuff. So again, against that, Bitcoin will go straight up. Can you, uh, do you agree if I say you that Bitcoin is safety boat? And the music still goes on on the Titanic, but the party from a, f a happy few <laughs> is uh, ripping on the safety boats that is Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Even Christine Lagarde called Bitcoin an escape hatch. <laughs> People yeah, are that's escaping, true. right? That's exactly, she's right. <laughs> so is, is Bitcoin cheap today? Yeah, it's incredibly cheap. What is the top? What is the objective? What is, when, what is the price of Bitcoin, uh, maybe in gold? <laughs> right, in gold dollar. is the way to, to, to understand it. Because against fiat money, the price goes to infinity. Because fiat money is going to zero. No fiat money has ever survived in 300 years. They've all lost between 99 and 100% of their value. None of them have ever escaped the, the, the problem of fiat money, ever. So Bitcoin will, go, we, will stabilize, the price of Bitcoin will stabilize uh, in, um, in uh, multiple assets. Uh. So when, when do you think Bitcoin is going to be mature and uh, not a speculative object? So when this cycle is going to end? I, I think when you start to see it approach um, a parity with gold. So gold is roughly $10 trillion, Bitcoin is roughly $1 trillion. So around $500,000 per Bitcoin. We're, we're, I think you'll start to see um, it'll be some more of it uh, maturing, if you will, as an asset class. But gold has no velocity because gold is the store of value. But Bitcoin with lightning, with maybe LGB-like protocols, maybe um, a lot more than just a store of value. Um, can we say that if Bitcoin uh, is going to, to, to be used as a daily, uh, daily mean of payments, uh, it would be more because there, is, there, is, there will be a velocity of Bitcoin. Right, there's layer two. Gold has no velocity. Right, layer two, or as mm. you point out, Lightning, the Lightning Network sits or on... three with right, smart contracts Layer three in Bitcoin. sits on top of, of Bitcoin. They settle in Bitcoin. So it's a derivative, essentially, that settles in Bitcoin. And so that's where you get your daily transactions. That's what's happening in El Salvador. People who are buying a, papoose, a pupusa for $1, they can use the Strike app, mm. and they can use Lightning, and they can buy it instantly. And, and that's the magic of Layer 2. And Satoshi Nakamoto even 
in his white in his notes, you know, he suggested that layer two for payments and transactions would would come along, and that's exactly what's happening. Um, so with gold, it is as you point out. The problem is that if you do have it for transactions, if you do have a layer two, then somebody you have to trust somebody to store your gold, and then you have to trust that it's verified. With Bitcoin, the transaction is the verification. There is no third party. I don't need someone to tell, if I send you Bitcoin, it's verified. No, there's no third party needed to say that's real Bitcoin. It is, if you, in your wallet, it, that's it. It's verified and every 10 minutes, the entire system is audited. That's how the blockchain works. That's what a blockchain is. It's an audited chain of blocks, 700,000 of them now, that have been audited of every transaction going back to 2009. So there is no need for a third party. So we can transact, nobody can stop us, and we, you know you're going to get real Bitcoin. So what price for a Bitcoin with high velocity in mean of payments? What, it, it, as velocity goes up, what price could Bitcoin go up? Well, I think that the way to look at it is... As a mean of payment. Well... I think if you're looking at what the ultimate top could be, you look at what the global asset market worth is today, it's about $400 trillion. Hmm? So you figure it's a 400X from today's price of around 45,000 times 400. That would be the Bitcoin's ultimate top. It's, it's gonna, everything is gonna be priced in Bitcoin. Between today and that. <laughs> right. Um, and um, that, that, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's an extraordinarily cheap asset at these prices. Uh, Max Kaiser, if you met Satoshi Nakamoto uh, tonight, maybe, <laughs> or, or if you met him, what, what would you tell him? What would I tell him? Yeah, <laughs> what would you ask him? Well, I, I would ask them, you know, what people say is that basically Bitcoin is hash cash, which was invented by Adam Back, plus <laughs> the difficulty adjustment. Mm. That's, the, that's what Bitcoin is. The, 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 the difficulty adjustment is the secret sauce. It's the special part of the protocol that makes it successful where the previous attempts were, were failure. And I would ask him, I said, is that a true statement? Would you agree with that statement? And, uh, and I would ask him, to tell me more about his thinking about the, the, the difficulty adjustment and, and what went into that, because that's really, really the magic of Bitcoin. It, it, we saw that when um, in China, when half the miners you know, left China. China ban. The China ban. And so the difficulty adjustment became hugely important because the blocks that are generated every 10 minutes, that never stopped. How, how is that possible? It's because every two weeks, the difficulty of mining Bitcoin responds to the size of the network. And so when all that mining capacity was suddenly offline, the difficulty adjustment, adjustment adjusted way, way down. And it finds a spot, economically speaking, where miners are incentivized to continue mining, right? They have to, miners need to be incentivized to continue the proof of work algorithm and proof of work is, is expensive and mining is expensive. You need electricity, you need hardware. So, and you, the people mine Bitcoin because they want to make money. And if suddenly the network is, drops by half in this capacity, then the, the way the protocol works, all automatically, uh, it will, it'll adjust downward to the difficulty. It has to do with the mining algorithm itself and how, the, how mining and how the, how the computers are utilized to uh, verify these blocks, et cetera. And it finds that sweet spot. Right, and then now it's on the way up again. So, uh, but, but we never had any downtime. Imagine moving, you know, uh, all, of, uh, all of the gold mining industry in Peru or, you know, Mexico, silver mining industry, and putting it on a jet and, sh and sending it to Houston, Texas without missing any production. <laughs> Essentially, that's what happened with Bitcoin. They took half the industry, uh, you know, half a trillion dollars with the business. They moved it overnight and not, it was no interruption whatsoever. Now, if you're, if you're Christine Lagarde and you see that and, and you understand what that means and you're still pushing euros, you are either insane, a moron, or both. <laughs> Max Kaiser, thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure too. Si vous aimez ces vidéos, abonnez-vous et pensez bien à cliquer sur la cloche pour être notifié des prochains épisodes. 
Et pour recevoir le guide crypto de A à Z, inscrivez-vous ici. On vous explique tout pour les débutants comme pour les confirmés.